Hello and welcome everyone um, to the discussion we're having today on software modernization. I'm Amelia, I'm Regional Director for Codurance in the North of the UK and I'm joined today by Sandro and Mash, the co-founders of Codurance and Jose who is our Managing Director for Codurance Spain. So in this episode we're opening the discussion on what is software modernization. So in order to help us with this understanding, I'm going to ask a few questions to start a discussion on what the term software modernization actually means. And it's going to help us all understand in what circumstances and organizations even that it might be applicable and beneficial to apply software modernization. So Sandro, if I could just start with you and you could bring to life what the term means to you. The way I see uh, software modernization is not a thing that you do once and, and stop. For me, like it's a continuous process uh, to improve strategic systems uh, in order to increase business agility. So I'm, I'm trying to be very like, like uh, very broad definition. But for me, the, the reason that is important, all those words is because a few things that it should be continuous. Right, so any company that relies on software to power their business, they should have that continuous process to keep improving and modernizing their systems. Uh, another thing is where. So that's why I mentioned strategic systems. Like modernization is not about tactical, small improvements. It's not about like putting more unit tests or, or just like do some refactoring here. This is for me part of the natural process of building software, right? But when you talk about software modernization, we are talking about more strategic uh, changes. We are looking at where the business is going, what the business wants to achieve and why we are not able to achieve that or why it's gonna be too difficult to achieve that. So with that in mind, we create a modernization strategy to achieve that. So for me, software modernization is all about strategic efforts to improve systems to enable business agility. That's how I see modernization. It is something that is very layered, right? Like it can happen at different parts of your organization, uh, whether that's uh, infrastructure, whether that is processes, whether that is, you know, applications that you're using. And a lot of the times what, what I see is that it's interpreted as, you know, maybe upgrading specific systems, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. I, I also feel that it's very connected to digital transformation in the sense that it's a, it's a different way sometimes of doing things overall. And, uh, and I think that's an aspect that, uh, that is missed sometimes, right? Is, is uh, like, like Sandro said, it, it strategic systems, but when you think of systems, don't just think about software, also think about uh, processes, think about people, think about, you know, infrastructure, uh, even how you decide in, in certain cases, uh, where to invest no, as, as an organization. So it, it touches the organization at all levels, I would say. Like another way I look at software modernization is it's about making software fit for purpose. And the purpose of software is to support the business as it is, but also to evolve as the business evolves, right? So often these two things, when, they, when that fitness is not there, when the software is not supporting the business or is not able to evolve at the speed that the business needs to evolve. And with that, with, with the reliability, that's when you know that you need to do something to, to make sure that the software is fit for purpose. You need to make it better. And that's the activity that I call or I think of as software modernization. But as Sandro said, it's not something that you kind of say, oh, hang on, the software is no longer fit for purpose and now I need to make it fit for purpose. You have to continue, continually make it fit for purpose. And it goes all the way down to like, for example, the test-driven development cycles we do, you know, you kind of build something, it works and you make it back to the refactor part, but it's part of the, the cycle. It's, it's something that you do as the core part of your activity. 
So, so just to bring it to life for everyone now, in what kind of circumstances would you apply the software modernization solution and, and what would be uh, the problems that you might be tackling um, when applying this? Innovation is one of the drivers. Like people want to innovate, but they feel that their systems are not uh, in a state that enables them to do that innovation fast enough or, or sometimes experiment fast enough. And... So innovation can be one of the drivers and sometimes you don't need to change your entire ecosystem of systems. You just need to decide where you are innovating so you can focus that uh, software modernization effort into that specific area so that we stabilize that area, we prepare, prepare that area so that innovation can happen fast, right? Because the way that you architect your system for fast feedback loop is very different from the way that you architect your system to just push a feature to go straight to the market and be used heavily and stuff. So depending on how you want to innovate, if you want to just show it, throw experiments out, collect feedback, uh, and then learn from it and change again. So that kind of lean startup mindset, the way that you architect your systems needs to be, needs to support that kind of fast evolution. But there are either innovations that are more focused. You already have a customer base. You are in a B2B, you know exactly what your customers want. So when you release, you do a lot of customer research and when you release those features, they need to be solid. They, need, they will be used straight away. So, but the way that you architect your systems for that is also different. So, so but innovation is just one driver. Uh, we have like sustainable change. We have leveraging technology. There are many other things, uh, risk management, business alignment. So maybe like some of the others could talk about those things as well, but like uh, those, there are many different drivers and depending on the driver, we might have different types of solutions for the modernization. I, I almost look at these in kind of uh, from two perspectives. One is around exploring opportunities. So whether that's new features, the lean startup, throwing out experiments, leveraging new technology, all these are a, a opportunities that you are exploring to give your business that advantage. And the other is, as you mentioned earlier, Sandro, it's about risk, right? It's reducing risk. It's about security. It's about uh, uh, defect ratio or failure rates or um, it's a risk to the business or its operations and those kind of things as well. So that's how I see it. There are things that you do or drivers that are related to risk. And then there are drivers that are related to opportunities. Even uh, a lot of the work or a lot of uh, the activity that's happening right now in, in software is around data and gathering data and making that visible and available and so on. And that the usage of that as well can actually be divided into risk management in terms of alerting, in terms of understanding what's going on. And uh, in terms of exploring opportunities, looking at your system and seeing what uh, what is it doing, like trying to understand your customer better or your systems better. I would I would also build on top of that, and there is because because you may be thinking, oh well, if I'm not trying to do those things, right? Like I'm not trying to run experiments. Like I have a solid business that you know I don't really need to be doing this thing. That's that's fine. Also, it also applies to you because I, I think there's an aspect of uh, increasing the lifetime value of those systems for you, right? Uh, there's something called the, the bathtub curve, right? Where when you start or you launch a system at the beginning, it needs to stabilize, no? And, and sort of like you have lots of issues with it. Eventually it, you know, goes to a stage where you can manage that. And when it's getting to the end of its lifetime, right? Like when it's getting obsolete, et cetera, it starts giving you problems again. So in, in lots of organizations, you may not be ready to move to, you know, or, or completely change it because it is so ingrained in your core business that it, that it will be something really, really difficult to do. Right. So also uh, it, it, so having a strategy like this would allow you to increase the lifetime value of those systems while you prepare, uh, you know, in order to evolve to what's coming up next, et cetera, right? So there, even if you're not looking to be at the, you know, at the tip of the spear kind of, no, and when it comes to like innovation or you still would 
get a benefit from it just on the stability side, just on the, you know, increased value for the business in general. I think that's really helpful when you're sat in an organization um, to bring to life what might be some of the situations or circumstances that you're coming across that might lead you in the thought process that software modernization could help you, uh, be it in that opportunity space for innovation or for managing risk and to make you more efficient. So I think that was really, really helpful. So something I'm really keen to do and to help everyone understand is you've kind of gone on that process and you realize there's probably an opportunity for software modernization because you're being impacted by some of the triggers that we've talked about. Can you bring to life now, like what would you expect to see if you continue on this journey with software modernization within your organization? What are the main steps or activities um, that you'd expect to see when you set off on a software modernization? Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the, the first thing that I would like uh, to see is a recognition that every technical problem is a business problem. So with that in mind, the first thing before uh, jumping on a software modernization initiative, uh, we need to dis they need to discuss what kind of business problems they're trying to solve, what they would like to do as a business or achieve as a business that they are currently not able to do or is impeding them to achieve. That is, for me, will set the, the, the baseline to discuss problems. Once we understand what we want to achieve as a business moving forward or the problems that we want to fix, and we mentioned quite a few before, uh, then there is a, a, a technical alignment. It's like, where are we with our technology? But that serves to frame the problem, business and technical problems. With that in mind, that's when we can start talking about creating a technical vision and the technical vision for me is a direction. It's like where we would like to be in order to satisfy those business needs. But I would advise not to create a five-year plan or a 10-year plan. I would create a vision, Keep make that be your direction. But as the strategy, think about the next six months, the next 12 months, but not like the next, keep that direction in mind, keep reviewing it, then create a technical strategy and run those initiatives, but in an iterative way that you can learn and adapt and recalibrate that vision. That's how I see those steps. Having a direction is important, as I said. Having the strategy is also very important. But then walking that walk, you know, there is this, uh, let's say, skills or talent transformation that you need, right? So you can't simply just look at the strategy and vision and think that, well, now that we have a good direction, we'll be able to get there. You need to also look at what skills are needed and do our people or do your people have those skills, right? And creating a strategy, a vision if, uh, for the skills development of your organization is also very important. And it's, has goes hand in hand with the technical vision. The end, the organization is people. Yes, we have the technology and the technology will enable all it, but it's the people that make things happen, right? So getting people on board and uh, taking the time to communicate properly that, you know, vision, that uh, strategic objective that uh, that you're trying to reach, etc., cetera, is, is essential to... Uh, not only align the organization, but also gain the support for a lot of these things. So that's a that's one aspect. The other aspect that I feel is super important is people tend to, you know, uh, uh, try to do you know big bang releases or big bang changes overall. And the bigger the change, the harder it will be for you to like get all the way there and to get people on board. So, so approaching it also in a uh, let's say structured way in which you're already getting return on your investment is essential for the success of, of something like this, right? Mm -hmm. And one of those things is, you know, we will, I think we will talk about this in the series later on, uh, is building a case for the stuff that you're doing, right? Like, this is not, as, as Sandro said, a technical problem is like, this is how it impacts the, the business. And that is a critical aspect, I would say, of the communication when you're doing something like this. I think we touched upon a lot of things that would be great to go into more details.
I mean, how do we break those things down? How do we do that inter iteratively? What are the different approaches that we we can tackle? Different. What are the what are the pitfalls? What are the pitfalls? What can go wrong? Exactly. I can see we're all dying to get going with the uh, next episodes and get into the real detail of everything. So it's great that we're going to cover all of these topics over the next few episodes. So I'm really excited to talk more and hear more. So. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Thank you.